Hello, my name is John Hellebrandt with Glidefast Consulting, and today I'd like to show you a few tips and tricks on navigating around ServiceNow a little easier and to find information very quickly. Uh, so one of the first things I want to show you is the stats.do page. So anytime you're looking for information quickly about your instance, you can go up here to the application navigator search bar and type in stats.do and hit enter. Uh, and what that will do, it will show a list of all of your uh, system properties, so your instance properties. So it'll show your uh, instance name, your URL, it'll show the cluster node that you're on. Sometimes people have issues with uh, an environment and they try to kind of uh, troubleshoot if it's a node issue or, or if something lar you know, larger. So they, you can go to stats.do and get uh, very needed uh, information, especially if you're opening a ticket with ServiceNow, like a high ticket, um, and they're asking what the patch information, things like that. So all of that will be readily available here for you. You can tell what uh, what version you're on, etc. Uh, you can see the servlet memory, the semaphore sets, and all of your client and uh, server transaction times, etc. So this is a really really good area to go to for server or for your instance information. Another thing I'd like to show you is the cache.do action. And what this does, this flushes the cache. The reason that they're kept in a cache is because it speeds up performance a little bit. For a lot of things that are uh, for forms and stuff when you're trying to open them up, um, it caches them. And oftentimes when you're developing, you'll find that things don't quite look the way they should uh, or you think they might look different, like you've made a few changes and the form still looks the same. Uh, in that case, try doing a cache.do. A word of caution though, do, don't do this in pr production. The cache.do um, will slow down performance initially. And so when users log in, it'll have to build up that cache again. It, it, the forms will load initially slowly for users after you do this. So this is usually something that is done in a pre-prod or development environment just to just to kind of it's like a last ditch effort to make sure that what you're that the behavior you're seeing uh, is actually accurate um, especially after making some form form level changes and in, in, as in a story for instance uh, the next thing I like to show you is how to access tables uh, quickly without having to use without having to type in the actual application let's say we want to hit incident we want to hit the open uh, incident records uh, you can navigate to it through the application navigator or um, if you want to hit the table and see a list of all of the records in the table you can type in incident.list all lowercase and what that'll do is it'll bring all your instance up in this frame over here and it'll show a list of all, all of them basically this uh, for for using that particular method you have to you have to you have to know the table name so, for instance, let's for the user table, it'd be sysuser, and likewise, the lower case, you can also use uppercase list, and what that will do is that will open up in a brand new tab, so you can navigate and see you have more real estate to work with, um, and you can and you can work with records from this view as well. So, lowercase opens up in the same frame, uh, the uppercase opens up in a new tab. Uh, those are a couple uh, worth mentioning. The history tab here, uh, this is very useful for finding things that you've done uh, very recently. Uh, so any action you've taken recently, you'll be able to find on this tab. A lot of people don't use it. I, I prefer favorites, um, and I'll show, to show you those in one second. But, but this is nice to kind of figure out what did I just do two seconds ago type of thing. So I'll show you the most recent actions so you're able to move. Like, for instance, we're, at the, we're on the instance table, um, things like that. So it will, it will show you most recent actions. Adding a favorite is very. This is a very good. Uh, this is a very good functionality to have and to utilize, especially if you're like in uh, in a an IT environment or you're on service desk and you have a lot of you're in the system a lot, uh, working with a lot of different forms and tables. In this case, uh, let's look at incident. You see, I've added one here. Um, we can add. Let's go to change. Uh, that's another example. We can look at op open incidents here. Now, we, let's say we hit change a lot. We can actually favorite this and just hit this little star icon. And that actually favorited the open changes. So if we hit the star over here, we can see here that it's been added, change, slash, open. Uh, likewise, we can actually edit it by hitting this pencil icon and click on the link. And we can actually change open test. We can change the name to make more sense to us. 
Also, we can actually update, uh, let's say we wanted to update the query. Let's say short description contains reboot. Right, we have three there. We can actually drag and drop this onto our favorites. And you can see here, it shows the query here, so you can actually change this down here. You can change it to, or changes containing reboot. So like that. So that makes that makes things easier, you know, as far as getting to places very quickly. And I recommend using that uh, as often as you can, uh, just to just to kind of save save yourself some time. A few other shortcuts I'd like to show you. You can actually use Alt Control C. Uh, what that does that'll that'll expand and collapse this application navigator over here. So as you can see, it's kind of I'm popping in and out without even touching that arrow down there in the lower left. Uh, another one is to hit the global search button up here in the upper right corner. Uh, you can hit Alt Control G, and you can see uh, my cursor is now active in the global search. And Alt Control I actually brings up the impersonator window. So you can actually quickly choose a user to impersonate if you're testing. Uh, those are three nice to have shortcuts. Another thing I'd like to show you is, uh, so when you're, when you're using an instance, sometimes the forms load a little slowly, um, especially really big forms. Um, and change could be a good example of this, uh, depending on the environment you're working in. Uh, and one of the things you can do here is actually click on this cog over here, the settings cog, click on the forms tab over here and you'll see this tabbed form slider usually I leave this on some people don't you know some people prefer the not to have it tabbed to show them in sections so what this initially does is it'll show all of the tabs it'll show all the sections um, laid out uh, one after the other um, and the forms can get quite long <laughs> so depending on the form you're working with they, they can get rather long so what I what I do is you use tabbed forms and what that does is it presents everything in tabs so you can just switch between them right also one thing to keep in mind is this related list loading a lot of times people have with the form and what that does it tries to load the related list and everything with the form itself the fields on the form and everything else sometimes it takes a while uh, to load the form so what I would suggest doing testing to see if it increases performance is use this after form loads radio button. Um, what that'll do is it'll make sure everything on the form is loaded first and then the related lists load after that. So if you want to quickly hit the contents of a, of a particular form uh, uh, very quickly or if you're on the phone with somebody it's nice to have the after form loads uh, radio button. Also one last thing I'd like to show you Let's say you're on a record. Uh, let's open an incident, for instance. And let's say you want to open an attachment or uh, add an attachment to the work notes. So now I've got three down here. What you can actually do here, instead of hitting this uh, attach icon up here, the paperclip, you can take this test attachment or any attachment you have on your desktop or whatnot, and you can just drag it on the work notes. And as you can see, it got, it, it got attached here. Uh, that is another um, nice little feature um, without having to actually go through all the steps to attach a file. So I hope that uh, this helps uh, you save some time on navigating the system. And please watch for future videos on tips and tricks and other uh, ServiceNow videos. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.